And Meccan history is part of a wider discourse of Muslim heritage. <coughs> this belongs to Meccan history and deserves attention as the mother of cities. So we should not, you know, we, we have a lot of attention to the cities of, you know, whether it's Istanbul or Cairo or so on, but really Mecca needs uh, a lot of attention and there's a people who are doing good work uh, there that uh, perhaps they're not getting the right uh, limelight uh, as I am today <laughs> to, to really show you the, their work. And these people, you know, we can support them uh, we can do more for them so they can come talk about uh, things before it is too late. And as the gentleman, uh, uh, the doctor said earlier, it, perhaps it already is too late because... It's in, uh, the, in the Mecca, I think. It's probably too late. <laughs> in the 1950s, when the demolishing works began, you know, it, was, uh, it went through the core of the city. Uh, the major mosques, well, I shouldn't say the main mosque is there. We have the Kaaba there. Uh, but we've lost a lot of the, um, the lo even the location points where things were. And um, so, you know, we really have to work back in time to make this uh, known to everyone. And um, again, you know, I would just end with saying that the Prophet Muhammad, you know, when he left the city, you know, uh, you know, he looked back and he said that had I, had I not been driven out, I would never have left you. And uh, for me personally, living there on site, it wasn't easy. For three years I was based there and uh, it was the most Those difficult. Cabins and the most challenging experience for me uh, in the conditions I was, I was faced with. Um, also, not knowing if my work was, the work we were doing was ever going to be approved. It was, it was very difficult. Sometimes you lose, you lose uh, your hope in what, why you're there. And also, uh, you know, the environment is very hot and most mm -hmm. of the time I'm working in Arafat in a Fort yeah, cabin. cabin. Yeah. And uh, my mother is here today, so she always said to me, take care, take care, but mom, you know, I was just, <laughs> I had an air conditioning unit, so don't worry. <laughs> so, you know, it was, uh, it was a learning experience, but really I, I say to everyone, if there is something you can do to promote more of Meccan heritage and history, you know, it's something we need more of. And, um, you know, we shouldn't shy away from this. So if there's any questions, you know. So now we have uh, around 20 minutes for your uh, comments and questions. Uh, okay, well, I will go one from that side, one from this side. Uh, yes, we have three What uh, What got my attention was that there wasn't any archaeologist on the site, was there? There was archaeologists. Uh, my main assistant was an archaeologist from Istanbul University. And um, they were working on site. We have actually the archive I showed you is just a brief skimming. This is just to give you guys an idea. We have more detailed technical studies if what you are. We have the technical studies and we even had a team from Istanbul, Kudeb. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. So the Kudeb team were coming and they were our consultants, external consultants, who were checking over uh, that you know, there aren't any decisions that we are making are structurally wrong. Um, you know, they were over making sure that, you know, that we weren't getting ourselves into trouble. So we did have archaeologists, but I didn't mention, uh, I couldn't <coughs> mention so much about it, um, but we did have an archaeological team. Okay. So I, I, I ask that because it seems to me that we did not actually see Mecca through the ages because we don't know who did what there. Yeah. I mean, seeing all that did not mean anything to me personally, yeah. because not knowing which era, who did what, who, mm -hmm. and what happened to these, mm -hmm. well, I gather that they were just disappeared. They were wasted away. Yeah. Like About Mecca through the ages, I would love to speak more, if I have a chance, to have another you know, a lecture here. We can talk more about the different, um, what I mentioned, the different eras of Mecca. And from what I've studied about what was formed in terms of the archaeological history of Mecca. But this is, as I mentioned at the start, a subject which has had little or no attention, really. And this is why I listed at the start of the talk the kind of publication that we were relying on, which you could see were mainly traveler accounts, which were, you know, just uh, photographs, at the best photographs. So we were really restricted. And um, we would love to, and if you would like to be involved also, we will, you're welcome. We would love to do more on this. And, uh, you know, uh, perhaps in the next, maybe we can talk more about through the ages. But 
yes, you're right also at the end, which I think your point that yes, we have lost a lot. And um, when we are working like this, you're trying to fit in lots of gaps. And would you believe that the plan I showed you of Alibay, the Spanish cartographer, was the most accurate plan? Oh yeah, I just forgot which one. Uh, I know. The, to create an archive, there is an archive, but it depends on what is available there. Sultan Abdul Hamid. Could be. And um, there, is, um, yeah, it, there is a lot more to be done. And <coughs> my talk today was simply, and I apologize, I couldn't go through the whole of everything, but I would never have been able to show you Mecca through the ages, all the different periods, and show you the material. But today is just to give you a, a knee jerk, if you like, to make you realize that the kind of work that's gone on and what the difficulties we faced and how we overcame. So I do really appreciate your comments. Uh, yes, Sami, very good work. Uh, I must congratulate you for, for this. But my major concern is, since I started exposing this, uh, working in Mecca, and a person from Mecca, I, I mentioned uh, in the media that this is the, day, the end of Mecca, especially when we carried out the excavation over the house of Khadija. And also, uh, before the, the expansion of the Mataf, I was very uh, frightened and worried that the house of where the Umm al-Hani's house was, uh, and there was Ottoman uh, mark there to say this was the, uh, where the area with Isra al-Mahraj took place. And therefore I, I wanted the, the reaction from the Saudis to keep this in place and the Muslim world to react. And of course Turkey was the first foremost to attack uh, and they said that we will, if they want to dismantle this we will take all this uh, heritage back to uh, Istanbul. But now it's all gone. I can take you there physically and say this was the area where uh, the Isra al-Mahraj took place or this. But this is history and it is important but not as history as what has happened to uh, Bayt al-Khatija or Mawlid al-Nabi And what Saudi is doing is systematically, I'm sorry to say, get rid of everything and then it becomes a legend. The difference between the Christians and the Muslims is that we have the seerah of the Prophet in the hadith, but we have it in the soil, where his masalla was, where he lived, where he slept, where the, where the well was. And people ask me, Dr. Alawi, you have written explosively and on this, well, what is the reaction of Saudis? They are not interested. So what you have achieved, alhamdulillah, but what they have kept in, uh, in, in, in our seifa, it will be history. They will, not, they will not do anything with it. We, when we were working on site, we were constantly asking for the Bin Laden group to release their archives. Um, a lot of the material that's taken and not used was dumped in Rosefa. Yes. And um, the situation in Rosefa, it's, very, it's not an easy place to go mm. or have even access to. So we did ask formally and informally that we could have access to the original plans. Um, something I will say is that um, not so long ago, a few years ago, there was an auction in uh, Sotheby's in London mm. where the original drawings of the first expansion, sorry, prior, before the first expansion, the survey drawings were sold. So somebody had got hold of those and given it to an auction house and it was sold off. That would have been, uh, for us, you know, a jewel, you know, because we could have worked with that to understand much more about how the mosque was. So, we have these kind of things happening and... Um, Can you no. now buy it? Can you now buy it? No, no it's sold. No, it's no, sold. It's, it's, gone. it's whether you know who actually bought uh, it and whether Further to tell me what you said, uh, alhamdulillah, I mean, for the good work that you've done. For what they are doing now, I'm afraid for the geological survey, it's dangerous for the well of Zamzam, as you, as you are aware. It goes back 4,000 years. And if they are not care, care, uh, careful with that, if there, there was an earthquake there, you know, six years ago. If anything happens, we will lose Zamzam. And the next one is the Bayt al-Mawlid where the Prophet Sallallahu was born and they are still not allowing me to excavate this and prove this is the house of Mawlid and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is, um, and there is, there is a, some work, and I mentioned earlier, Umm al University do have the Hajj Research Center. They have made some <coughs> good publications. And, um, you know, there's, there's a wonderful work that, where they photographing Mecca from, from the sky. Mm. So every, I think every period, five years, yes. there's a helicopter, you know, goes and they make a survey of each side to see the progress. And now there are people there who are working um, 
Um, so there are some efforts being made. Um, yani, I can't say not not all are the same. Yani, there are there are good people there on on the ground who are against uh, what's happening, but um, it's something that you know only time can tell, and inshallah there can be more. Uh, any question from backside? Yes. Uh, you gentlemen. Yeah. Me? Oh, is that me? Okay, thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you for your very um, interesting and stimulating talk. Um, you have raised four questions in my mind, but I'll be very brief. If you allow me, um, I'll just share them with you. Uh, the first one is that uh, I've had the benefit of visiting numerous mosques in various countries. And one thing I look for, what I call, <coughs> is the spiritual quality when the building was built. I see that in um, the moral architecture and the Ottoman. When you, you've been involved in the, in the Haram, okay, I, I, I have visited many, many times and I've looked for, from an architectural point of view, delicacy, um, refinement, and what I call spiritual quality. I'm very aware of the functional needs. It's open <coughs> seven days a week, all the year round, and a number of people vary from day thousands to hundreds of thousands and so on. But is there a, was there a purposeful uh, intent to create a spiritual quality in that place of worship, the central place of worship for Muslims. The, um, the question is asking whether there was a spiritual intent on our part to recreate uh, a mosque that we felt was going to be used inside the Matab. What I can say is that um, our team, our craftsmen, our skilled workers, they had worked on many mosques previously before, uh, mainly in Istanbul. So they had um, prior experience of working uh, in ways that maybe are not so familiar with. And I, I did mention we are working in the traditional way, traditional lime mortar dome. The Bin Laden group had previously made a mock-up also um, as a way of getting us out because they thought they could just make it from concrete. But their mock-up was made from concrete, just concrete and the stone wasn't Shemesi stone like we had used, they just used cladding like a tile, so they make it from concrete, everything they just clad the tiling. And something that people recognize straight away, when they came to our site, they said that the feeling, which is I think what you're asking, the experience of standing under your structure is very different from the one we're getting from the concrete made one. <laughs> so, I mean, as an architect, I could say maybe, you know, it's the way the material absorbs the heat. Uh, maybe it's, it feels a bit cooler when you, when you stand under. But um, I don't know your, your question. Uh, you know, there are many parts of your question. That I, I, and thank you for asking. But, um, you know, we tried to do the best we could in that so situation. The answer is no, really. I'm sorry? The answer is no, I think. No, the answer, answer is that the spiritual image of Mecca has Gone. been destroyed yes. by the development right. all the way around it. Exactly. It has become an estate building. Exactly. Yeah. Marble castle. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. The, the Saudis are actually worshipping money. That's right. Yeah. 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 Makkah was very town, desert town, about 400, 1500 years ago. And when we say, okay, don't think about Mamluk, Abbasid, the Indian, Iranian, or all these nations just contribute to mm. development. Yes. And these are our heritage. But those were they are respect with them. They are desert or just were they living in tents. They were not like a palaces, they <coughs> like a Cairo and Pharaohs or Syrian or Indian or Iran. All these are contribution of our. Why do we ignore our contribution? There is something I have to say firstly is that <coughs> the people, the Saudi culture, they are not I think it's not fair to say that, you know, these people are intense. I think each region has a custom, it has a language. It has a way. And for us to say that, you know, these people are just in intense with I think it's wrong because, you know, this is the place where our Prophet, peace be upon him, Absolutely. was born. He was, uh, you know, from that region. So, yeah. personally, for me, it's a superior culture. If that is something that I want to say, that superior in the sense that for me, it, it has more spirituality. 
to come to the previous gentleman's question. How does season this? So this is first point. Um, each region has its own thought process. The, the point I was trying to make earlier is about, you know, how do we contextualize the history of Mecca? Was that if we fall into this framework of this building is from this period, or this is an Abbasi column, or this is an Ottoman building, we will we are paving the way for more destruction and perhaps more, you know, of what is happening, because we are giving political reference mm -hmm. to things which not may not necessarily have been political. Political. We are judging the intention that this Ottoman building was built here as a colonial type building, or this was put here. Because the columns that we <coughs> saw that were marked on and, and inscribed away were for this reason. They were simply to legitimize that, oh, this purple, there's a sultan mentioned here, so we should r rub it away. So what I'm simply saying is that if we, so my point is that if we allow that, if we start to talk about, oh, this part of Mecca, we actually, this is the, as a first step, we should understand Meccan heritage. That's what I meant. Uh, I didn't say ignore completely, uh, you know, but so th this is the first step towards many steps, I hope. And I, I do understand your point and, um, you know, there is much work to be done and, um, you know, we should, uh, we should be just careful of, uh, you know, I, I don't like to speak bad against Saudi Arabia. Um, it's a place I lived and I, I met wonderful people and uh, people who are really trying good on the ground and they are not, you know, we, we should be careful because we have this quick knee-jerk reaction and our article comes out and everybody wants to comment and say X, Y, Z, and all like this. But, you know, we should be careful because these reactions, you know, it's like there needs to be something constructive and not just reactive and then quiet, waiting for the next article. This is what, 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 what I think. Can I make a constructive suggestion? <laughs> uh, there was just one question behind, then I will come to you. Okay, thank you. Yes. Hi, I, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you again for all the work you and your team done. I think there's so few people relatively speaking, in the Muslim world that has uh, exposure and understanding. It's purely a spiritual place. But we shouldn't necessarily separate the spiritual from the heritage. And from the brief show of the pictures you've shown us today, we've seen what a fantastic culture, what a fantastic heritage it is. Yeah. You've got columns that have come from the Roman era, probably from Jerusalem or Damascus. Yeah. You've got stylist common columns, mm. which you see similar uh, things repeated in, in historic Delhi, those lotus ones at the bottom. You've got beautiful paintings on the domes that we hear talked about in Medina or on the Cathedral of Sama. Um, we've got so many things, and it shows us how vibrant, how accepting, how warm Islam is to all these different cultures and, and people who have contributed to the most sacred site in, in the heritage. And it also shows us how our attitudes to um, religion or the way in which we approach our material culture and spirituality has changed. You saw that those paintings had been whitewashed just like in Damascus, how they're uh, plastered over the mosaics, and how one period the attitude of uh, design and drawing changes, and how today, unfortunately, we've lost so much in the sense that we have a mock-up done in concrete, and it's expected to have the same mm -hmm. spiritual, same aesthetic makeup as something built from the original structures. So it's so valuable. I mean, one of the most uh, interesting things for me was um, seeing those sort of Fatimid timbers that were, were reused in a, in, a, in a different way. And it's showing all these different aspects of history coming together. And so I don't know, I mean, the vast majority of people here, I'm sure, are very grateful. But from my point of view, if only we saw the debt of gratitude for, for what you've done, for the limited time, and for the difficult conditions which you worked under, we want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Thank you so much for what Sammy, you've Sammy, Sammy, wonderful uh, brother. Uh, 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 thank you, more questions. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, thank you, Zulaga for doing this. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm heartened because I've seen how Spanish are recreating our Islamic uh, architecture and everything, and very painfully. And uh, but my question is, when do you finish your work? Me personally? Yeah. So for me, I, I worked on site uh, and I ended my work there uh, in 2016, so June 2016. Uh, I ended my, my work there on site exactly. and um, for a number of reasons. But um, you know, it's not so, now the Bin Laden group, there are some problems. <laughs> so now it's uh, the, the region and you know, the, 
it's going to be a problem and uh, many you know m many of my staff have all left and what so we all you know we, we're off-site at the moment but uh, I do hope that one day in the future to actually work go back you know because I, I really think there's a lot to be done and uh, as uh, especially in Medina also because new I projects are being announced uh, in Medina and changing all the time um, whilst I was there on site uh, I was asked um, to do a survey of uh, Mashhad and Bariya in Medina. I don't know if uh, people are familiar with this. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I traveled to Medina and I put together the surveys and the idea of, there was an idea that p potentially this mosque could also be dismantled and rebuilt in a new location because there was a highway that was being planned going in that. So, you know, naturally you pick up the mosque and put it. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> So uh, I do have intention, I hope in the future, Inshallah. Inshallah. to uh, yeah. return and please, you know, do make dua for me also. And, well, yeah. and you are uh, uh, how could you so help brother in excavating Maulud? How could you help him to get the Saudis <laughs> agreed <laughs> on? I don't know uh, enough. Is there any, any that, chance? Uh, it's an uh, active atmosphere and I just hope more people can do can do. That's not possible. <laughs> Okay, uh, how many people there are asked, want to ask questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. so, 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 the last three questions, the last, the end, first, in the second, mm -hmm. and the third, if you can understand, please. Sounds sounding early. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, I think um, your work is exceptional, and on time, because it's all gone. And you know, you can't really say that it will not remain, and that's obvious to the world, not because of because of economic forces. I would suggest, as an individual, I'm not selfish. So I'm not involved in this process. That this is clearly an economic move from the regime because of the loss of oil to create a Las Vegas tourism income stream for the 30 billion annual money they, well, the projected money they can make over a decade. So this cannot be stopped. We're not stopping this about economic power, uh, which we haven't got. But your work, I think, I'm just slightly uh, subtle on the framing of this, and that of course in Islam we don't find, and this is not to do with Islam, this is historically, architecture as a repository of our religion. That's the great resilience of Islam, unlike the Roman Empire, where architecture is the pomp and glory of pre-Christianity and then imperial Christianity. <coughs> and I think that's the resilience which I'm sure you recognize. In, 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 in the holy site of Islam. It's a very orientalist framing to imagine architecture as the essential expression of Islam. That's why there's two billion Muslims. Because this is the resilience and the revival of Islam. Uh, but the architecture, which is a very important but, uh, aspect of Islam, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, is I'm is a question or a so, statement? Can you hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Good. So why this is important is because the legitimation of this, so the Ottoman Empire's protection, despite its problems, of Makkah from such a far distance is represented in your architectural finds. And in many ways, one second, the <coughs> removal of that is the removal of the notion of the nature of Islam, which is not a Middle Eastern religion, and is not an Arab religion. That's clearly stated in the Quran. Arabs understand that in traditional Islam. And this is an upsetting and troublesome thing, because, I'm going to ask my question, because Really, the issue isn't the destruction of what we know is already gone, but the destruction of history. And history not as only the artifact, which is what you do, of course, vitally important and important for everyone to know, but the history of how we got here and where we are going. And I think that cannot be resolved by um, the, no, the notion of being, you know, being very cordial with what is going on. But what I would like to ask is, what did you find out, if you can tell me, I know you wanted to let uh, of the destruction of Medina? And what is the, what are the plans and what has gone on with regard to construction of buildings? But that is the capital of Islam after all, Medina. Makkah being the heartland and the first city of worship, but Medina the capital of Rasul Salaam's capital. Sorry, I what do you know I about the destruction of that? I finish, I finish. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you for your question. Um, Firstly, um, any, it's your it's your understanding. I do understand your point, which you're trying to say that you know the Roman Empire, <coughs> the art being the central focus of, the, of expression of the ideals. But what I was talking about by us not having the architectural framework 
what I meant, and I'll clarify, and uh, I'm sorry if I led some people to understand otherwise. There are some, this is a new plan of the mosque. There are key problems which would be understandable if we could have studied the t previous typologies. And I can name them here, but I don't want to say it. there's a camera here also. <laughs> but there are key problems. And if we could have and had an had a inventory and archive and, and study, not, not as a promotional, <coughs> or we have an archive, but simply to stop us from repeating the mistakes. So, so that's, that's what I meant. In regards to your question on Medina, uh, what do I think? What do you know? Mm -hmm. You can tell us about the construction <laughs> that is publicly known, so I'm not asking a secret, of Medina, which is the capital of Islam in terms of <laughs> Islam's very death and the history of Islam, power comes out of Medina. And if there is a view for modernization of an American pattern, Medina is next. I don't work for Saudi or Turkey, I can, I can say it. Any, um, that is inevitable, it is to come. They're finished with Mecca, they are coming to Mecca, Medina. <laughs> Masjid al Nabvi. Um, we and, know and that the surrounding environments, so not just the Masjid. Of course. The, our sites of interest in Mecca and Medina, you know, as um, what do I know of what is going to happen there? To be honest with you, I, I don't know so much, really. And you're winking like I know something special, I don't. <laughs> because the plans are changing. You know, um, I do know that there were only uh, three years ago, there was an uh, intention to make uh, the Bab al-Salam area wider so the sisters could access it also. Um, again, plans were drawn up, uh, designs were done. And then there was a new plan change to have a, a new mosque within the Medina Mosque. That has gone. Then the recent expansion project has started and stopped and started again. Um, there's also the famous Seven Mosque project who stopped and started it. Actually, to tell you something, my goal was to actually to live in Medina, and I would love to live in Medina. And, but it got put on hold, and I find myself back in London, facing you lovely people. <laughs> okay. so, next question. Uh, I haven't been negative in the sense I was mainly concerned about um, what surrounds uh, the Kaaba. Of course. It's the spiritual space of Islam, the capital, the spiritual capital of Islam. And Medina is really the secular capital of Islam. But um, I have two suggestions to the wonderful work you've done. Don't, don't misunderstand me. One is actually to create an archaeological society for the site. Second one is an architectural heritage society. <coughs> And both of these should be linked to the highest authority in Saudi Arabia, whether it's the prime minister or the king <coughs> and the religious authorities. And nothing should be done to the Kaaba without the approval of them. <coughs> and I think that is really the only way forward. Otherwise, there are some influential people like the Aladdin family would actually go directly to the king and ask for permission to do something. As for the dome, in fact, there was a reconstruction of a madrasa in Sana'a, and it had won the Aga Khan Award for <coughs> Architecture. And that one, they actually used the line. And the beauty of the line is that it actually expands and contracts according to the weather, and, and therefore it doesn't develop any cracks at all. The concrete would develop cracks, mm. and the brickwork will develop cracks, okay. and that is very sad. And my concern really is what's happening around the Kaaba. These horrible developments should be demolished. Yes. And nothing, nothing should be built <coughs> around the Kaaba for a mile. Yes. So that people would walk 15 minutes to the Kaaba. And if necessary, the disabled and the infirm and the young people could actually use electric cars. And, and that problem would be solved. By the way, I've, I've been to Najaf and Karbala and, uh, and Kadhiniya, and they actually use electric cars from outside the, uh, the shrine for about 10 minutes walk and bring them in here. And that is an ideal situation, really. What's happening around the Kaaba would never be allowed in St. Paul's in London. True, true. And yet, the Kaaba is far more important than it's St. Paul's. Pharaonic or in yeah. Vatican. Or, or the Vatican, and of course Jerusalem is being destroyed as well by the Israelis, yes. very sadly. But that's a different uh, question altogether. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, 
The last question is... Well, they, they are saying that yeah. the Israeli can destroy the Jerusalem, we can destroy Kaaba. That's what they are doing. <laughs> I was a bit disappointed because original picture was rectangular shape, very big space and so on. And then to put a tiny round thing in the center around the cabin and so on. You know, you got rid of a lot of space there. Was that to build hotels and develop the area for more people to stay? I mean, it's so the, small. The circular now. structure like it the was. Circular was temporary, Mata. It's been removed now. It was just simply while construction was going on yeah, that's to right. create more, more space. But I, I do understand your but point. it's nothing right? like what it was. But this tower must be demolished. Yeah, this was something that we, we yeah. really we fought a lot to. But you see, the problem was that uh, um, we were trying to, so what they wanted to do, was they wanted to keep the same column axis going all the way back to the project. So for that reason, uh, this was why the shape was changed, and I do understand your points. It was, uh, I, I don't agree with it, but uh, it's something that we, we've had to work with. And uh, something I just want to mention, if anybody wants to have a look, I have my uh, my hard work in my sketchbooks that I, I worked on. So please, you know, pass these round. You can have a look at my, um, you know, the kind of thing, my sketches I was working on, things I was doing. Last question. Yeah, one last question. Well, okay, yeah, okay. Please. Well, <clears throat> As far as we know, Saudi government has demolished lots of heritages, including Egypt, uh, uh, castle from the Ottoman Empire, and the uh, train station in Mecca. Is there any heritage left in Mecca? <laughs> Not demolished. There is, uh, there is very few. This is something that uh, I, I'm also trying to find out now. And while I was there, I was, uh, my wife and I, we were, we were actually driving around and we were trying to take photos and, you know, we were trying to understand what is from old and, and what is new. So this is something that uh, I think is an open question. This is question. I mean, um, I wonder. Is there anything left? Uh, very little. I'm sorry, I can't be more precise than that, but um, and it also depends what you mean by heritage. Um, <coughs> Two hundred years is that classify heritage? I mean, there's a there's a way, but there is some, but but not uh, not enough. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have afraid, a website. But, yeah, uh, we have a website. I have to end here this talk, and uh, thank you very much for thank your you. time. And thank you. Thank you.